The COB is presented by Rabobank. Awarded 2023 SMSF Savings Bank of the Year by Mozo. Well, hello, this is the COB, all the stuff you need to know about the day in business and markets. I'm Juliet Sali. And I'm Danny Akuye. And it's lovely to have a Jules back sitting next with <laughs> next to me today. You're a bit lonely yesterday and a bit I was, hot. I was a no bit hot on. and a bit lonely and have to say a bit <laughs> flustered. <laughs> all right, well, the markets are flustered today, Danny. It's all about these uh, rising bond yields, of course. Let's check in on what we're seeing on the close because we have been touching these six month lows oh. coming through into the market. Yeah, now I have the ASX 200. It looks like it is closed down by about 94 points, 1.34 percent. So uh, that brings the index down to 6,938. And it's just worth pointing out, Juliet, mm. we were off 1.6 percent. We put in a bit of a rally and it's all kind of fading in the afternoon session. But Indeed. maybe that's weakness in Asian markets. We'll come to that. Well, yeah, let's bring up our three themes because, of course, we are looking at this stock sell off. Uh, we had the RBA, which we'll get to in a second as well. But you're talking about uh, not just the market here under pressure. Mm. We've seen Hong Kong's Hang Seng fall as much as 3%. An index of Asia shares, remember China, closed mm. for Golden Week, but it's at uh, about a 10-month low. So we're wow. seeing quite mm. a lot of significant selling coming through these concerns about the property sector, these higher bond yields. And then, of course, bonds play into central banks. What did we hear from the RBA? Not much. Uh, no, not much today. And uh, so we're still sitting at 4.1%. And and they're kind of hedging their bets, aren't mm. they, Jules? I mean, it's very much a case of, well, you know, cost in goods inflation coming down, services is still quite punchy, employment is still looking quite good. But then they said there's a whole lot of uncertainty around the outlook and they're just going to watch the data. Yes. So markets again saying, well, you know, it wasn't really much change, was it? No, but it did impact the Aussie, which uh, continued to fall yes. to those 11 month uh, lows that we saw yesterday. I just think we've seen the Aussie hold the, around- The Aussie dollar. So it's 63, 63 spot one five, five at the moment. Um, very, very weak. And uh, really not surprising because if we are getting Concern. So we've seen a sell-off in mm. the commodities markets. The energy price, you know, oil yeah. has moved down. So with this full risk-off trade as bond yields rise, Australia really is at the apex there yeah. in terms of, you know, we're a resources economy, we're a cyclical economy, and of course, the Australian dollar takes a lot of the brunt of that. Indeed. All right, let's have a quick look at where we are seeing the market now. Of course, we haven't completely closed, but uh, there's some of the banking moves on the back of the interest rate decision. Uh, you've got the NAB, the weakest performer there. Uh, let's have a look at some of the other sectors as well. Obviously, retail is in focus when we do have an RBA decision. Mm, interesting. So Wes Farmers and Harvey Norman, looks like the market decided to mark those two up in comparison to JB Hi-Fi and Premier Investments. And that might be off the back of this hold because housing prices have, of course, been moving up. But the real discretionary retail is looking a bit sick there. Super Retail, La Visa, as well as Accent, all off by over 2%. And let's have a look at the energy space because that was where we saw some significant selling, the likes of Woodside and Santos, both losing more than 3% in the session. We did see uh, those oil prices retreat from mm. recent highs. Commodities were hit quite hard in the global session and that was across all of the metals as well. So when it comes to the miners, Let's see how they fared out the session. Now, uh, BHP there. Yeah, so again, profit taking pretty much across the board. Gold, um, we don't have golds in there, but golds have also been weaker. But, you know, uh, it's golden week. It, you know, China is closed. So, you know, not a lot of action there in terms of iron ore pricing, although it has been pretty firm in Singapore. Yeah, and uh, just getting to the point that you made about gold, a new crest closing down about 3.3%, Northern Star down 4.3%. let us talk about some of the other stocks we're watching in today's trade. And it was really interesting, one of the smaller uh, mm -hmm. cap companies, ECS Botanic shares were on a tear, closing up by about 18%. Now, this is as the medicinal, well, medicinal excuse me, cannabis company said, it secured a binding offtake agreement 
agreement to supply medicinal cannabis dried flour over the next five years, I got all of those words wrong, to the Perth-based medicinal cannabis <laughs> company, Medicam. But this is really interesting because it kind of gets to that point as when could we actually see um, this become a legal or a more legal drug yeah. when so many doctors are prescribing it from everything to cancer relief treatment yeah. anxiety. anxiety yeah 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 i do have friends that um they really like yeah mm. Mm. they use the oil i think right okay. yeah yeah i think you can yeah well it's legal in thailand now which i, I find is. is fascinating because thailand always had such strict drug policies and yeah. now you can get it anywhere and um other stocks we we're looking at yeah today. absolutely so helios and australian clinical labs shares are under pressure as the a triple c says the proposed buyout helios would require acl to divest its approved collection centers across the country back in july the watchdog said the takeover would lessen competition in the pathology services market ACL Labs in March offered to acquire Helios through an all share takeover. All right, we were also looking at Computer Share. It's entered an agreement to sell its US mortgage services business to the US based Rhythm Capital for an estimated consideration of $720 million, and that acquisition includes about $136 billion in unpaid principal balance of mortgage servicing rights, along with a specialised origination services business, and it's uh, slated to close in the first half of 2024. And, and the market really liked that. It was a bit of a, a relief moment, mm. Jules, in terms terms of uh, getting rid of a business that had been probably a little bit of noose around the neck. But <laughs> hey, it was stock of the day. And we had Mark Gardner from MPC Markets and Adam Dawes from Shore and Partners. Would I buy? I mean, yeah, if you've got the feeling that interest rates are going to continue to stay up or even go higher, <laughs> even though it looks pretty doppy up there, um, you know, potentially it doesn't look too bad here. I'd say hold. I'd, I'd definitely call it a, it's a strong hold or erring towards a buy. Um, PE is actually relatively in the low end of the range. Um, usually it's sort of anywhere from around the 20 to up to sort of the mid 50s. Yeah. So Let's get an update of all things trading and his view on the RBA as well. Welcome to the COB, Henry Jennings from Marcus Today. I think the official term, as we've been calling it, Henry, and nothing burger from the RBA and Michelle Bullock's first meeting. But of course, we are wondering when there might be a movement. And certainly uh, the Aussie dollar is continuing to come under some pressure. Yeah, good afternoon and thanks for having me on. Uh, yes, it was a little bit of a yawn fest, I have to say, from Michelle. Her first outing as the head of the RBA and pretty much a cut and paste job from uh, last time out. So no change to rates and once again, talk of data dependency, etc. and committed to the target, 2 to 3% inflation. Pretty much what uh, Phil Lowe was saying, but certainly you know, the pause that refreshes will certainly help uh, some mortgage borrowers at the moment and uh, maybe get things a little bit uh, under control for their financial uh, household balances, but uh, nothing of any great surprise. The Aussie dollar, as you say, under pressure, mainly because the US dollar is so strong. Those yields in the US, uh, those yields here as well, are both continuing to be uh, very elevated, to say the least. So uh, that, that is the story at the moment. Bonds high, equities low. Absolutely, Henry. And you come back from holidays and, and here we are in the month of October. Um, yeah. Quite a few people. I was saying uh, to, to somebody yesterday, I keep looking under, under, you know, under rocks, under paper to get, you know, find some bullish things <laughs> to grab hold of. But I'm struggling here. Can you help me? Well, actually, Danielle, October is traditionally uh, one of the better months for, uh, for markets. Um, it gets a bit of a bad rap, of course, because there has been some notable uh, sort of crashes and market corrections in October, but generally it's seen as one of the better months. September actually is one of the worst months uh, for the market as such. So, uh, and September certainly bore that out. So, I was kind of clinging to the hope that we could see a little bit of a revival in the market in October. We do have US uh, results just around the corner, and uh, of course, we have had our um, ex dividends uh, very much in September, and all those dividends are being paid out now. So the stocks go ex dividend, you get the checks, and there's lots of checks dropping at the moment. I guess the question is what's happening to all that cash? And at the moment, that cash is finding a home 
on deposit and not in the market. And people, I think, are very wary of putting that money back into the market. You can see, really, the volumes are pretty light on across mm. the board. And, and there is a sense of apathy, I think, at the moment, uh, and certainly a bit of um, sort of avoidance in terms of uh, trying to pick any bottoms here because it does look a little fragile, to say the least. And, you know, we, we've stopped saying about Tina, which is there is no, no alternative to uh, Tara, which is there are real alternatives. So Tara's in, <laughs> Tina's out. And, you know, when you can get four and a half, five percent in the bank on deposit, you have to question whether you want to risk money in the share market or just leave it in your bank account. Indeed. All right, Henry, just looking at some of those jitters in Asia too, that 3% slump you're seeing in uh, Hong Kong. I mean, we've talked to you earlier about the ramifications of this China property crisis. Just how concerned should we be? Well, I guess it's, you know, it's certainly something that we should be looking at in our peripheral vision. And it does, as, a, as the biggest supplier of raw materials, I guess, to China, you know, we are hoping to see some sort of stimulus which will help our export industry. The lower Aussie dollar, of course, is, is a big, big tailwind for our exporters in terms of uh, the Aussie dollar prices they receive. But any problems in China, and we're seeing certainly some comments coming out that the property market is yet to stabilise there and they have still got serious problems with some of the developers. Although I noticed that Evergrande came back on to trade in Hong Kong and they're up 42 percent at one stage uh, before crashing back. Uh, somewhat. So there is a significant amount of volatility there. There is still a significant amount of stimulus that does seem to be lacking. But uh, as at the moment, as I say, exporters of raw materials from Australia with the Aussie at 63, whatever it is, uh, are doing relatively well, at least in Aussie dollar terms, but not unfortunately in US dollar terms. Mm. So with all this weakness, as you said, Tara's in fashion, but surely we must have to put together a little bit of a shopping list just in case we do get more of a uh, shakeout in markets. Is it like healthcare's really been under the pump and yet everybody keeps, you know, recommending it? Have you got any, <laughs> any <laughs> as it keeps, I mean, do you know what I heard today? Everyone is saying resume, aren't they? Everyone yeah. we speak to. Uh, do you know what I heard today? It was really fascinating. So the whole thing about these weight loss drugs, it's even affecting uh, companies like Kellogg's. Wow, yeah. what people are not eating cereal. Well, no, that's that's what the market is extrapolating oh. out. And I was starting, we were all trying to work out, you know, how far is this narrative gone? Is it affecting yeah. other healthcare companies? So I guess just throw that out to you because, you know, if, it's, if people are saying you're not going to eat your Cocoa Pops or your Special K mm. or something like that, I mean, heaven forbid, maybe they're saying something about CSL that people will be healthier and you won't need blood plasma. Who yeah. knows? <laughs> I, I don't think that's at the root of CSL's problem, unfortunately. There are some changes going on. I was reading a Morgan Stanley report today, which was very in-depth uh, about uh, the use of uh, plasma in some of their uh, anemic uh, procedures. So uh, there are some fundamental changes, I think, happening in, in healthcare. I'm not sure a um is going to be the cure-all for the weight problem. I have to say, uh, I'm a little bit dubious on that. I know that uh, I have some people I know that have had some great results, but as soon as you stop taking it, you put the weight back on again. And it is very expensive. And in, a, and in an economy where people are making cutbacks, I am sure that one of those cutbacks may be that kind of uh, treatment, shall we say. Uh, probably very popular in the US at the moment, probably more so than in Australia, where it's quite hard to get hold of and quite expensive in, in some respects for a month's supply. The other thing they were talking about in terms of this weight loss thing was was aeroplanes as well, mm. in terms of how, how much jet fuel mm. people, uh, the airlines will save if people are thinner. Of course, they do love to weigh uh, our luggage when we go on flights. I know only too well, having just been traveling around Europe on budget airlines, how much that costs. But they never weigh the passengers. So <laughs> it's going to be uh, interesting. I guess it's, you know, it could have far reaching ramifications, but I'm, I'm not sure that we have discovered the holy grail just yet of weight loss that everybody's going to be taking, everyone's going to be thinner, everyone's <laughs> going to be healthier and happier. Uh, I think there are some side effects with this, uh, this drug uh, and that some people are, are not really that. Um, not really that good on it, so we'll wait and see. Well, also, whether or not you can get your hands on it. But, uh, Henry, thanks yeah. so much. Henry Jennings from Marcus Today. Thanks, guys.
Okay, well, that was it from Henry and uh, interesting stuff going on in the markets. Mm. But let's check in and see how those are leaders, if we can find some. And uh, yes, we found some. And speaking of CSL, it looks like that there was some buying today in CSL. But uh, I'll be really interested to have a look at that Morgan Stanley report because uh, there's definitely been a lot of selling in that stock. Mm. Otherwise, looking for any particular trends Beans, there. And yeah. I must admit, struggling a little bit. Tab Corp up 1.6%. Uh, Interesting that we are seeing some buying in both the likes of Fletcher Building and Domain. My little hunch there is uh, we did note a couple of other stocks that have a little bit of exposure towards housing. We're also uh, in the green today when we're discussing yep. Wes Farmers and Harvey Norman and also Bega Cheese. So. Um, well, Tabcorp, it seems like there is this um, Australian Shareholder Association oh, advising yes. on a vote against uh, further pay, so attacking the, the CEO's pay and urging a shareholder re revolt. So whether or not people are buying into the fact that there could be um, a bit of fat sh uh, skimmed off there. Let's have a look at the, the laggards as well. Um, in the resources space, I mean, we've been talking about some weakness coming through in those miners on the, the drop that you had seen in some of those commodity prices. Siona Mining closing down 9.5%. And it was up with Sierra Resources. They were both, from memory, they were super strong yesterday. Oh, so there you go. I mean, down yeah. by one cent. So that means whoever made a bit of a tidy <laughs> profit maybe <laughs> sold out. But it's a 9.5% drop on a 10 cent stock. Uh, Sierra Resources, as you say, down 7.3%. And uh, West African Resources and Evolution Mining yeah. as well. So the gold. What, the what? gold's being hit there. Yeah, just wondering with brain ship holdings being oh, a that's little just, bit of a... That's very volatile. Is there yeah. any news there? It says uh, Motley Fool has got a, a little story on it saying a weakness offset by the early access availability of its second generation Akita IP solution. So um, it, it fell today, closing down by 6.5%. All right, let's have a quick look at the small end of town as well. And Brockman Mining was a standout there, up 20%. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, nothing else really captures my eye in terms of knowing what's going on. Uh, just to note, big tin can is up there again, up uh, almost 10% today. I just love today. that stock name, Big Tin, <laughs> tin Can. can. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> when, when they came up with that, they're sitting around there, I would have loved to be in that room. Okay, let's have a look at the, the laggards. Um, Avita Medical down by about 20%, and then again, some uh, resources stocks, so Lotus and, and Aeris Resources were among the losers there as well. And we should check in uh, what's happening overnight. Not much, Danny, we've got oh, one thing. But the JOLTS report, which is usually, um, it, it's funny because this was a report that they never used to watch, but now they all pay a lot of attention to. So really, I suppose the story is going to be uh, job openings, uh, whether or not it moves the market, what we see in bond yields. Mm. Uh, yeah, it's more of the, the same old, same old at the moment because later on in the week, of course, we have non-farm payrolls, which right. is really important, and the ADP yep. uh, jobs data as well. Well, let's have a look at what is on the docket for tomorrow. We've got the RBNZ meeting yep. after the RBA today. Eurozone retail sales, of course, we're talking about China being closed all week for Golden Week and then some more US data too. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, it is quite a big week for data, but let's just have a look and see how the markets have closed. So the ASX 200 did close down around 89 points. There's the SIBO 200 down 17 points, one spot 27%. ASX 200 down one spot 28%. But it really is the Aussie dollar, which is continuing to weaken. We're probably going to have a tussle around 63 cents to see if it holds. It's currently almost off uh, by 1% off 0.8% at 63 spot 11 and US futures looking like they are uh, ever so slightly the mm. minis in the red as well. So and just worth pointing out that that ASX 200 close is a new 100 day low for the index which Ooh. is down 1.5 
4% over the past five days. Okay, well, let's move on to something a little bit more positive. And uh, at our last virtual investor event, we asked you if you were interested in adding alternatives to your portfolio. And nearly 70% of you said yes. So we're bringing together expert asset allocators to share how they build a portfolio in a space that's traditionally been out of reach for retail investors. We've also got managers from funds right across the spectrum of alternatives. So join Koshi for essential, essential alternatives. It is happening 18th of October from 11 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. That does it for us, though. Oh, I think hold today. on. It's Whoops. free to register. You can see the full agenda at Ausbiz dot co slash essential and just a note that a lot of the strategies and products being discussed are only suitable for wholesale or sophisticated investors well that is it from us today it has been so good to have you back on the desk Thank with me you. i don't like flying solo on the cob <laughs> just a little hint everybody and uh yeah so well, i was uh, gonna say thank goodness it's the end of the day because i'm tripping over my words so and i even <laughs> forgot that uh, disclaimer there but we will be back bright and early tomorrow hopefully with absolutely uh, and uh, lots of uh, great interviews on the website for you to catch on, uh, ca catch up with. So have a great evening and we look forward to seeing you tomorrow. See you. The COB is presented by Rabobank. Awarded 2023 SMSF Savings Bank of the Year by Mozo.